us uh, go ahead. Uh, let us go ahead and uh, uh, learn this identity and access management. So this is also a, uh, uh, one of the most demandable uh, course, which is also part of cybersecurity. Uh, I will explain uh, how what is this and how important it is uh, if you learn what are the things you need to learn. And uh, I will uh, explain in bits and pieces. And I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking like uh, we can have a couple of sessions on this uh, going forward. So uh, this is a more demandable uh, in IT field. So you can grab grab an opportunity once you uh, have hands on this identity access management, and you can also get into cybersecurity of learning the skills. So uh, just uh, before I start, uh, let me introduce myself. I manage cybersecurity. Uh, and uh, I have almost uh, uh, 30 years experience in IT. Uh, so here uh, I worked on identity and access management for almost 10 years. And uh, before uh, getting into cybersecurity, so this is uh, what exactly most of the IT teams uh, in the, uh, need. Uh, so before we proceed, what I want to know uh, from, uh, we have uh, members here. So uh, what exactly you think uh, identity is before we start? You can Google and you can give, or you can give an uh, answers uh, while we are going with the sessions. So uh, can anyone answer what is identity before we uh, get into this one? Anybody have any idea about identity? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, I'll just uh, know the thing like uh, identity is nothing but a, a particular number or the IP address where we got the IP address from the uh, internet providers. So it is related to something or uh, related to identity. What I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm not related to IT field and mm -hmm. ac access is nothing but a, uh, so there is an uh, options called uh, allow to uh, re, uh, i mean uh, allow to use the uh, applications or the softwares okay uh, yeah uh, uh, bit close uh, so that is correct so uh, almost and uh, am i audible to all or uh, there is yeah any... you are audible you are audible yeah i have uh, my volume 100% Okay, so yeah, uh, I will try to uh, uh, talk a bit louder uh, if uh, there is no voice. And so, Munar, can you can you start a slideshow? I will start. I will start the yeah. slideshow uh, as I go through this. Uh, um, I want this to be interactive. Uh, I will try to uh, explain as much as possible. So the slide slideshow is you are not seeing my screen. Uh, uh, can see. We can see your screen, but slides, yeah. so it will be. I did not turn on. Yeah, I will turn on um, as I go forward. So, um, identity is uh, a record. We can say a record, uh, for example, uh, a name uh, assigned to a person uh, who is joining the organization. It can be a physical person or a person, or it can be, it can be a uh, service account. This is called as uh, identity. So, this is a record which will be unique uh, in the system. So any person who is joining the organization uh, will have his first name, last name, date of birth, uh, and all the details. So that records will uh, generate a, a email ID that is called as identity. So uh, going forward, what we'll discuss is about uh, identity management, access management is, so, this is a, um, uh, a records, uh, in the organization, and uh, uh, so I will uh, define here how identity access management is. It is a fair framework of business process uh, policies and technologies that facilitate the management of electronic uh, digital identities. So here, uh, whenever there is a person who is joining any organization, so a person can be an intern, or a, can be a experienced person, or a management level or higher management person. So. Uh, Whenever there is a, a, a person who joins any, any organization, they will get uh, the record entered by the HR team that is called HRM system. 
once uh, the records are entered into the HR SM, uh, MS system, they will create a flat file, flat file, and uh, they will send it to the system uh, where the identity access management, whoever manages them, they will process this file. So uh, while processing this file, they will have these records. So they will check the first name, last name. If they already, they, the record is already created, so they need to generate email address with the first name, uh, initial of first name or initial of last name, my complete first name. So that record has been created uh, in the system. And in case already there is a record, then uh, they will add a letter. For example, if there is a person whose name is, uh, example, if I give a common name. So there are many common names, uh, like uh, if you are seeing in uh, Vijay Kumari, if you see Vijay Kumar, uh, is a, I'm giving an example here. So Vijay Kumar is a common name in uh, in India. So there will be many persons with this particular name. Just an example I'm giving you here. For so Vijay is there and uh, by generating the email dot uh, K at the rate, for example, the company name dot com, that will be created. That is kind of, kind of it. Now example, if the user is already existing in the system, then they will create vj.ku at the rate company name. So that will keep going on, or else they will have a, 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 a suffix like a, a number one, two, three. So that will keep on going on. So the system, uh, any organization will face these challenges. So they have to um, make changes in the records, create email address. They have to write the policies for the password policies. Now, uh, this is just an example of uh, what exists, uh, identity and access management is. And uh, <clears throat> now, uh, the other task of the person who is managing this, uh, they, they should be they should uh, think of single sign-on. That is a two-factor uh, authentication, multi-factor authentication, and the privilege access management. IM is one which is called as identity access management, and the other thing is privilege access management that is called as PAM. So that is also a, um, uh, called as PAM. That is an important uh, topic, and I will discuss later uh, in my later sessions. Now, this is uh, on the screen what you see. This is just an example here. Uh, going forward, I will keep explaining of uh, by giving live examples as well as uh, explaining each bit and pieces. Whenever you have any doubt, you know, kindly raise your hand or you can uh, you can speak out and I will explain it. So, uh, uh, so the, when, when the, this is uh, the components of uh, IAM. So the components of IAM is like adding, removing, uh, updating individuals and the roles in the system and uh, assigning this level to the individuals or groups. Then the, also design the policy of roles um, in an organization, they will have roles and they have policies. Uh, so coming to this uh, roles policies, I will explain in detail. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Do you, anybody have any question on this slide? So this Can you the, please, uh, please make it full screen? I'm sorry? Please make it full screen. Make it full screen. Okay. Uh, Presentation mode. Yeah, you can you just, are, can just yeah. leave on slides so actually. Here, I, you, you should be able to see it now, right? Yes, yes. yes, yes, okay. yes. So you uh, you are able to see it in the full screen, right? Okay. So uh, anybody wants to have go through this one, they can go quickly on this one. So I, I will explain all of the, the points going in the next slides. So I have a uh, flat file as well. Uh, so I will discuss on that. So the, the points which I discuss here is the technologies also provide to securely store identity and profile data, as well as governance construction to ensure that only data that is necessary is relevant is shared. Other thing is, uh, these are the components of IAM. So how roles are identified in the system and adding, removing, uh, and updating the individuals uh, and their roles in the system and assigning levels 
So who will get what and when? That is a part of identity in the in, in any organization, whether it is a small organization or it is a big organization. So it is the one IT team uh, that is uh, called as cybersecurity or identity management team. They will manage all these functionalities. So coming to this implementation, so there are uh, uh, I have I have. Uh, Created here implementation. How whenever there is any kind of implementation, that is user provisioning. So in user provisioning, the thing is creating an account, modifying, deleting user accounts. So this the, here we have like this point. SSO is single sign-on. So single sign-on is the one password that will be used throughout the organization on multiple applications. So so this access now you have one username. So initially, what have used to happen in uh, like almost like ten years, twelve years ago. So for VPN, there is, there will be a different a separate password. For system, there is a separate password. For a particular application, there was one uh, one password. So it was uh, difficult for users to remember multiple passwords, which password and the. IT uh, policies, uh, they have like the password should not be repeated, the password should not be unique, and that kind of challenges were there. So uh, single sign-on uh, uh, terminology is used. The password is used in the entire, for the entire application in the particular organization, that is single sign-on. So multi-factor authentication, that is also called as MFA. So now, whenever you are uh, accessing a, a particular application, so multi uh, MFA. So, anybody have any um, doubt about the MFA, or shall I explain in detail about this? It's nothing but a two-time uh, two-time uh, factory authentication. It's like uh, having in the Instagram as well as in WhatsApp. No, it is. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Now, when you are logging on a, a bank website, so most of them you should have the bank account. So they are logging onto bank website and they are doing a transaction. Then, while completing the uh, the transaction, you get uh, you get an OTP. So that OTP is the multi uh, multi factor authentication. That is, somebody has uh, there was hacking. There was like uh, if somebody steals your username and password. They do a transaction. They uh, add to the beneficiary and they transfer the amount to someone else. After some time, if when I log on to a system and check my account, for example, I see that my account uh, I had a, um, so a number of like uh, I had like uh, for example I had like uh, fifty thousand rupees in my account. When I see now it is not there, uh, so it's all uh, so I got bankrupt and all sick. So the transactions used to happen. There were there are sources like how to steal that password. Hack the system and all these things. So the multi-factor um, authentication was introduced. So you have a phone. Uh, so you the OTP is generated until unless you get you once the uh, uh, OTP the transaction will not get completed. So even uh, the system is hacked and all these things. For example, the username somebody knows my password, username and password. They want to do a transaction. So the second uh, kind of authentication. Now, if I'm logging on to multiple systems, I have Google uh, account, uh, so I have logged on my system. Now, if I'm using it on some other device, that is a mobile device, so it will generate a multi-factor authentication. They need a confirmation from the user that it is you who are trying to log on to a different system or different machine or different mobile or different uh, gadget. So there is kind of, uh, MFA. So, uh, hope uh, this is clear. Or, uh, if you want, I can give other example as well on this. So, uh, are you clear about MFA? MFA is authenticated. When you are logging or doing any kind of transaction, they will ask for uh, uh, confirmation from you from different sources. That is, it, it can be email, it can be SMS, it can be uh, uh, it, it can be in. Um, uh, uh, kind of this, uh, like whatever you do, WhatsApp kind of thing, whatever you should define, uh, it will ask for the authentication until unless you authenticate it, like it will not complete, that it will get into error. So uh, it will it will not accept the login or the transaction that will deny and it will fail the, the process or workflow. So is this clear? Um, uh, if you 
if you are clear then i can go to the role based uh, yes and uh, i have one question related to multi factor authentication is mm -hmm. it possible like uh, without otp and without uh, authentication number or the code uh, the scammers or the uh, what we call hackers can uh, do that thing uh, see uh, most of the for example organizations banks uh, they have introduced this one but there were many possibilities even we keep the strong password if we don't share password with anyone so, so there is a uh, algorithm defined by uh, the system. For example, you have your username. Now, I will try. A, the password can be from 0 to length. I'm giving that zero. It is, for example, 40 characters. That can be uppercase, lowercase, special character, number. So that can be a combination. And that can uh, the, the length of the password, I, uh, let us assume it is not more than 40. So I will uh, I will think of an algorithm. So okay, first, now password, what uh, your, your password can be of uh, a cover letter, alphabet, combination of, I do a uh, like combination and I can, I can break the password by a source of uh, tools or softwares. So um, if I know your user ID or if I know your details, I can uh, think of password and crack the password. So, there is, a, uh, there is a thought, there is an algorithm that we'll discuss in uh, later. Now, if I, if uh, for example, I, I'm able to get your password now. I have access to your bank account. For example, bank account, I am able to log in. So I have logged in. Now I can do whatever I want to do with your account. I can misuse it or I can do any kind of transaction. I can change the nominee for example i can change the address i can change my phone number so this is happening in the background so you will not aware. so one thing is like oh, everybody has phone and uh, they make use of it so they, there is a like okay so this process should not get complete unless until there is a kind of confirmation so <clears throat> for changing the records if the, it is if it was not online, then you have to go to the physically go to the bank and make the changes. Now you have an option of making changes online without going to the particular bank. So you can make all the changes. So when there there are uh, the uh, there are pros, there are cons. So they can be misused. But the, you making the use of technology. What we are doing is we are making that okay. This particular thing can should change after your confirmation. How you can get the OTP and uh, uh, there is a different kind of authentication. Whether they will, you get direct call from the bank that these are the changes which are happening. Is it done by you or uh, so? Uh, if you are making a transaction for more than a uh, fifty thousand lakh, or uh, while using a debit card or credit card, sometimes there is a direct call from this and there is a confirmation that if there is a transaction. This please confirm uh, with the number one if you have done it or two. So they will. Deny it, or they can capture the records and all this. Thing. So that is it. Authentication. So it's clear now. Uh, shall I go, go through the next one? Okay, I will. I will uh, uh, treat it as a yes. So now here we will discuss on the role based access control that is also known as RBSC. So this is assigning uh, permissions based on the roles. For a person, a uh, an intern joins an organization and uh, there is a if he joins a particular team, whether it is a development, whether it is a QA, whether it is a finance, whether it is accounts, uh, IT or uh, HR, whatever your uh, departments uh, are there, so they, they, there are every department will have their own style of working. For example, human resource team, they will have they will uh, hire the people, they fire the people, they will look into the employees, um, employee records, enter records, make changes, their uh, uh, education kind of education thing, the the verification, everything. So HR team has different rules. 
the, now if you are going with the IT team, the IT team will have uh, different role. The role is to provide uh, access to the system, give them uh, uh, permissions, what they can search, how they can search, and uh, there are uh, accounts and uh, accounts and privileges that is given by IT team. Now, same thing with the finance. Finance team will have different functionality. So that is role based. So whenever a person is joining the organization, so I will explain in depth of the role based access control, how a person can, uh, how the roles are defined, how the company policies are defined. Uh, we will have a, de a detailed session on the roles uh, and the policies and the organization. I will discuss in detail. This is a, this is a so most of them will uh, not um, uh, just make use of policies. There are very few people who write the policies for the company. They, that is very much important. So and that will help them uh, get into the next level as well. So you should think of this one uh, on policies and uh, writing the policies for any organization of the thing. So I will explain in detail on this. Now coming on the privilege access management. So there is a uh, managing the admin access. Uh, so, so I, I will uh, I will uh, I will have a uh, separate side of this. So let me explain the privilege access management is a person, a IT person has a privilege to uh, lock a system, uh, install a software, uninstall software, uh, give some kind of access. Then the HR uh, have they have their complete uh, different privilege. Uh, so we will discuss about what kind of privileges are there in, in our next session. So here, um, these are the components. So they are the components of this identity access management. So let us uh, let me explain about what are the components and uh, 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 what are the components on this one. Piroz Akhtar has asked a question here. Uh, Uh, yeah, uh, Firoz, uh, cyber security, say, as I told you in the web, uh, as I discussed in my last uh, webinar, uh, India as a number uh, in, uh, in terms of population, uh, we, are, we are number one in terms of population. So we are making number uh, use of gadgets. So there are more gadgets used, more uh, electronic devices and all these uh, things. So here we will have uh, more security breaches and there is a risk of hacking and as an individual as well as uh, an organization. So definitely there will be a uh, there is a there will be a huge requirement and career scope in cyber security as well as uh, identity access management. Okay, I will. Um, Answer these, these such uh, all these other questions at the at the end of the session sessions and what are the courses that is needed. I will also explain that. So now authentication. Um, so as I explained in this one, author authentication is one. Authorization is uh, so there is a difference between authentication and authorization. So can someone tell me what is authorization and authentication? Any answers? You can Google it. You can Google it and you can answer uh, this one. Authentic, what is the difference between authentication and authorization? Very simple terms. And uh, it is defines like authentication is nothing but uh, the identify the person or the user. Authorization is uh, the thing where the uh, you are authorized to use the access or not. Exactly correct. For example, um, I'm uh, for a presentation or for a webinar or for any, um, uh, if I'm going from one organization to another organization and I need to have some kind of, uh, uh, I need to explain, I need to give a demo uh, about the limited tools or things. So I need to show, uh, like showcase a couple of things from my organization. So I need to have authorization from the higher management or the IT team if I can 
uh, uh, once they authorize, I can go ahead and uh, uh, provide the details to the organization. So there are some uh, details uh, about the authorization. So until unless I get authorized uh, to uh, tell something, so um, I cannot have the access for this one. So we are giving the authorization to the system uh, uh, as a identity access management team or cyber security team. We are authorizing a uh, uh, couple of things so people can make access. For example, uh, I have a personal laptop or you have a personal laptop. You can make use, you can install each and everything right from the windows to any software so you can browse any website and all these things. Similarly, if we go to a particular um, uh, a cyber cafe, just take example, cyber cafe, uh, I, I'm not sure like uh, we have uh, these days cyber cafe, but if we go, we cannot access uh, other things because there is a restriction. They have not given authorization to, uh, to browse other, uh, uh, some websites. Now coming to, uh, uh, if, if, to uh, uh, if you're working in an organization, some organization will even block Google. You cannot search uh, anything and you can, you have to make the use of the internal website. So they have, uh, so that is the authorization, whether uh, we, what, what can be used, what cannot be. And that is again, part of administration. Administration will authorize things whether who will use when and what. So this is uh, administration authorizing authentication. Authentication is I, uh, OTP, just think of, uh, just keep in mind. Authentication is uh, just a big uh, phone call or a OTP. Authorization is a uh, approval kind of thing from a management or a, for, for, for a respective team or department. Administration is uh, giving access to when uh, like a particular application or entertainment or account to use within the organization or, or uh, outside the organization. Now, the last thing in uh, the component for this IM is auditing and reporting. Auditing and uh, reporting is, for example, there are 1,000 employees in the organization. They have joined at a uh, uh, couple of years. Not all of them have joined at the same time, but they, uh, at different times and different dates, they have joined the organization. They have access. So now auditing is a major part. That is also part of cybersecurity and identity, um, access management. So as to audit, the auditing is uh, what we are doing. We are auditing the identity and we, uh, we will report it. For example, somebody has access a it team has access to finance a finance person has access to hr so there is a uh, the policy when we are discussing about the policy when uh, there is a policy return here there is a misuse of the data within the organization there it can be a breach so the auditing will happen every uh, quarterly so if somebody has been given access incorrect access or what will happen? A person who joins the organization in the HR team, they will move to a different team. Uh, so uh, whatever the accounts or the privilege they have, they will take the privilege to the organization. So now they are working on a different uh, team and different tools. They should not have the access to what they had with, a, uh, with their uh, 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 prior, like prior team. So, uh, so the records which it, uh, they have should not be moved from one team to another team. So we will have, we, there is a tool that will keep auditing and we report to the manager that this person has access to this particular thing. They should submit a request or it should be revoked immediately and it will be removed <coughs> by the identity access management team or the helpless team. Uh, or the service desk team, whoever is there, they will raise it and they have access. They will remove the uh, unnecessary. The reporting is done to the managers and the respective teams. Somebody ha has a different team and they, there are justification and the management uh, they need to answer why they have this one or 
why they need it and for if they need it uh, or what type can they want. So the explanation, everything is there. So that is to secure the data within the organization. So these are the components of uh, IAM. Um, so if, uh, shall I go to the next slide uh, or anybody have any doubts on this? Sir, so can you explain auditing again? Yeah, auditing, I will explain. Uh, there are three peers, uh, three, uh, for example, three to four uh, persons in a team. Now they joined as a development, uh, for a development purpose. They are doing uh, software development and they have developed on software. So they will have access to, for example, respective uh, softwares so, uh, or uh, uh, softwares as accounts. Now the, the person who was in the development uh, team, um, his role is changed. Now he, he, he's a manager now. And um, he will have, uh, now he will be not responsible for the development. Now he will be responsible for the managing the team members. So he, he doesn't need to do the development activities. He may or he may not need the access. Now he his task is to manage the people and uh, the task now the same. Now, whatever the roles are there, that roles uh, will be audited. So there is a uh, uh, scheduler, there is a job. Uh, so there is a whenever we, I told about the policies. So the policy is now when, whenever there is a change in the role of a particular person, a person is a developer, now he is a development uh, manager. Now his position, has, position is changed. Now, whether he needs this set of uh, accounts privileges or he needs higher end of accounts and privileges. Now what if he needs both of them? Uh, now going to this uh, next level, the development uh, accounts and privileges, if it is needed or if it is not needed, then auditing team, uh, what will happen is it will be marked and it will, uh, the email is triggered. So I will discuss about that one. So this particular thing is needed or not needed. That means the confirmation email, which is sent to the user's manager. Now, now for example, you you were a developer, you became a manager. Now, you the roles are changed. The email will be triggered to the user's manager. For your manager, it will email will be triggered that this person has this particular roles. Now, uh, uh, it is a, it is like manual or automated. Either it will be triggered and you ask for suggestion or it will revoke it. Uh, uh, as soon as the particular person's role is changed and all this, there is automation. And uh, in my previous slide, and uh, going forward, uh, uh, what I will do is I will give a demo on this one and I will explain on what are the types of uh, pol uh, like policies and what are the, uh, how the auditing is uh, can be happened. I will explain it to you. For example, a person has n number of accounts or records, he moves to different uh, department. If he doesn't need all these accounts in the, for a different uh, department, and uh, so that will get highlighted whether that is needed or not. So the data breach should not happen. That is auditing. And this uh, reporting will be done through the system to the management level. And I will explain that as well. Um, so is this uh, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let me go to the next slide because... Uh, um, sorry, yeah. uh, one question related to IAM. Um, yes, please. It, it, it's more related to, uh, you know, career-oriented within the IAM. So I've, I've been in the IAM team from the past uh, two years. So uh, I've been working on the access certifications uh, uh, campaigns uh, for IAM as well as uh, PAM, okay, and we also do a bit of a, uh, you know, a coding thing. It's not a core coding, but uh, whenever if, if some task is failing, okay, something is failing, like uh, new was... hires, very hires transformation uh, transfer something like that, then we go to debug and perform, you know, a few things like from operations perspective, not uh, from the in engineering standpoint. So uh, along with this, we also do some sort of uh, SOX work, you know, providing the audit reports uh, that we perform uh, as part of the certification, like the evidence packages or something. So uh, with this kind of work, 
okay uh, what what would be the next step uh, you know a person uh, for a like like me uh, you know a, a, as the uh, you know to elevate in uh, iam or you know next steps uh, in iam or in cyber security yeah in iam like uh, if you have uh, you are you are working with for iam and uh, you have experience on this so the certifications what are the certifications uh, and uh, i will explain i will i will tell you that at the end of the session which uh, uh, which is a part of this one so uh, and i am like uh, what are the uh, tools which you are using right now so that will help me uh, right now uh, we work in sale point okay uh, so sale point octa is one and... sale point is one ym is there yd ovd oes so these are other uh, identity access management tools. Uh, so uh, one login is there, cyber arc is there. These are the things which are needed and uh, uh, it is working. Now, if you have, um, so I have hands on uh, OIM, uh, identity access management completely. Oracle identity access management, OEM is there, OE is there. Um, uh, so save a sale point. Active directory is there. Um, uh, you, you, should, you should have hands on that one. Uh, Okta, uh, sale point, uh, one login, cyber. These are the things which you should keep learning. There are uh, three courses on cyber uh, website, one login website, Okta website. There are free courses, free certifications uh, for basic for the beginners or for uh, uh, just for the beginners, and if you want to go for this uh, certification, you have to uh, practice. There are practice exams as well, and you can have certified. Now, going forward, there will be uh, uh, AWS. There are many things in AWS and, uh, so that you can learn. Uh, that is a highly paid job uh, in the organization that is within India, uh, as well as there are more requirements. Uh, Compared to other jobs as well. So if you, if you have your resume and you put these skills on your resume um, and you start attending the interviews and all these things, and, uh, if you have skills and if you have if you are able to crack this one, uh, once you submit the resume, I'm sure that there will be like three to four companies minimum uh, chasing you to uh, get interviewed. And they will, they will, I'm just telling about this three to four is a minimum count, which I'm telling you. But there are more yeah. uh, in the uh, uh, market right now. And uh, coming to this, uh, now you uh, uh, like uh, I will explain about this. Uh, yeah. Other... To j just to uh, you know just to add uh, one more point to the same question. Sorry if I'm taking time. Um, uh, in in our organization, so there are different teams within the IAM. For example, transformation team, which acts uh, like a business analyst between the application teams and the mm -hmm. engineering team to onboard the applications and uh, th there is governance team who set the policies audits and all and there is a core engineering team who actually develops the code uh, in the back end and uh, there is our team which is the operations Excellent. so for me to step up uh, which which would be the best platform i'm sure uh, you know coding may not work for me because i have <laughs> never been uh, no. to coding and my uh, in terms of educational background or my previous experience so I've, I've been into the operations not in any coding stream but apart from the core engineering if i have to consider uh, to step up in my career which would be the best field uh you know for me to uh, step up yeah uh, so here what you can learn is what you have the basics of everything and you should have the basic of at least uh, uh programming not coding i'm, I'm talking about this one so basics of this one so you can learn Splunk, you can learn uh, Xcode, uh, there are uh, Xcode. Uh, pen testing is there one which you can learn. So this will definitely help you because you have the uh, idea of how uh, edit access management works. And uh, you have, uh, you're working in a particular, uh, only providing access and uh, edit and access management to the organization and you are managing that. But there are organizations uh, where there are certain people who manage all these things. When I was talking about YM, OEM, OES, OID, OED, this was managed by the 
a, a particular consultant. Uh, so they use they have to manage all these things. So you need to have all these skill sets to manage everything. So most of the organizations, they, what they will do is they will hire one person for OAM, one person for OAD, one person for OES, uh, and then, uh, like, uh, so they will distribute the task and uh, between n number of persons so as to distribute the load. But there are organizations, they will need person with all the skills. So you, but whenever if you have all the skills together, there are more chances of this one. Uh, and uh, definitely I will discuss all this uh, at the end of the session because we have just 15 minutes left for this one and there are many things to, be, uh, to cover up. So let me sure, speed sure. up and I will answer uh, at the end of the question. And definitely answer. If there is anything, please keep, uh, uh, please, uh, 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 please wait for the end of the session and definitely I will answer. And I will help you on this one as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so let me go to the next slide. Uh, I need to be uh, a bit fast here. Now, here I will give examples. Instead of giving it uh, um, presentation wise, I will take you to this uh, sheet where I have kept it here. So please let me know if you, uh, all of you are able to see this uh, uh, Excel, which I'm sharing with you. This is a kind of like a file. Yes. This is, uh, I have downloaded it from the uh, internet. It is not with any organization. So I'm not using any, uh, any data from any organization. So here, this is the uh, things which when I was talking about uh, policies and everything, this is access for file management. This is the uh, role names. This is what, what everything needs to be done by the uh, core team who manages. For example, I'm talking about the principal consultant kind of role. So what they have to do is they have to design everything. Now, when you are um, working on edit access management, um, I just want to know like how many of you have uh, uh, are working with identity access management or uh, Related teams, so that will help me I'll go forward. So, all of you uh, are working with uh, related to identity access management or just want to know about identity access management? So, <clears throat> here, this is a uh, this, uh, these are the records. So, this is a template uh, for this control, how it is done. So this is a role name, which is need to be defined, record type, access profile, privilege, and uh, uh, these are all the things which uh, which is defined. So here, this is for uh, this is particularly related to Oracle. When I'm talking about Oracle, that is uh, uh, with the organization which are using this uh, uh, Oracle tools. Uh, so this is related to this uh, particular application. So. Identity, uh, IBM has their own identity access management thing, and Amazon has a different, their own. So the basics are the same for all of them. The record type and uh, the template, everything is same, but the software and uh, uh, use are different for each other. So now coming to this profile management, which I was discussing, and I will give example because we have limited time here, and I'm afraid that I can cover all of them. So here, where a particular person joins the organization. So this is uh, this uh, these are the profile names for this uh, particular uh, a particular uh, designation. Or it is an edit full that will be uh, mostly with the administrators. Read only will be the particular uh, respective teams. So here these are the fields of profile names which is generated. As a, a system generated, whenever there is a software installed, so these are the names. And we have an option to generate the uh, like uh, name. This is service rep. This, this is most probably given to the uh, customer. This is uh, technical support team. And uh, customer support uh, rep will have a different, if you can customize here. Service manager, it, uh, like these are the uh, fields which are system generated. Or if, uh, whenever we are thinking of any organization, 
or uh, giving access and all these things. These are these are the templates. <laughs> क्वेश्चन uh so these are the uh, profile names which are system generated here we can give the names according to the roles so there is organization and the organization will have a thought like okay, we need uh, hr team we, we need it team we need uh, accounts team there is a sales team there is a development team qa team so a number of team and the teams uh, names should be defined and the the names are defined here in the system and as well as custom so for example if i uh, if i'm thinking of a per uh, respective team the team uh, uh, identity uh, access is given to a particular person they have this kind of role they can edit a record edit i mean to say they can make changes for example um a person from a um, Identity access management can make changes of the email address completely. So there is a name uh, for which I have told about uh, Vijay Kumar. Now, this is actually the system. There is synchronization that happens every twenty-four hours. So the data is uh, it communicates to the HR database and in the system from the uh, access management, identity management, uh, it will have a sync. so whenever there is a uh, new joining uh, new journey the the, the, system, the information which is stored in the system that is called a hrms that is human, uh, human resource uh, management system that will uh, that will synchronize with the uh, it and uh, that will keep happening so uh, if the record is uh, is updated by the identity management people then can there is a sync so that is two way sync and uh, there is a change happen but the records are push it is bidirectional or unidirectional if it is unidirectional then the record which is the identity management team has done or the it team has done that will again get changed and the thing so the, the record need to be changed uh, from the hr team uh, and uh, how the thing is happening and all these things the level i will discuss uh, uh, about this one and here they have like uh, read access edit access full uh, full access is they can delete delete the record make changes and they can append in the system so this is these are the types of uh, uh, access profiles in the within the system <coughs> uh, let me jump to the other slides because this will be a limited time so let me rush so here if it is a sales related thing so sales related or any organization we have like a role role name that is defined and uh, one is administrator that can be system administrator one is advanced user advanced user can uh, uh, administrate uh, like they have like uh, administrator roles as well as they will have access to these uh, all other system executive these are the roles uh, role names which are custom uh, defined and system defined uh, or prefix be defined so whenever there is a when we are building a system and uh, here uh, let me go with this uh, record types here there is account uh, this is a uh, this is very uh, i will explain in my in my next uh, future session how this works and what so here for example there is a rec account the so it has access it can 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 create can read all records so here whatever the, uh, there is a checkpoint so th this particular account can make changes activity so here what, uh, while writing the policies we have to write for example there is a particular person for a particular organization there are many organization uh, in a company uh, like uh, there is a vp there is a uh, svp there is a, a director there are different teams they will manage 
So this, this policy is when we are defining, this is record types that needs to be defined and this comes under the policy. Whether it is the advanced user policy or that is administrative policy, your yeah, executive policy, what kind of policies are there? This is uh, this is what I was discussing in my uh, 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 like at the beginning of my uh, uh, presentation. So this is this is the writing how how you can write the policy and how the uh, how it need to be implemented when the records uh, when the records are all these things. So whenever there is a job schedule, then it will make changes, and this is a part of auditing when. It, and it is the basic how the uh, how the records are caught by the auditing team. Like uh, whenever the job runs, if a person, executive person has, for example, they can read this all this. Um, here I will check, I will check. For example, this is these are the two records. If I'm checking the two records, so here they have. Uh, if you see on the left hand side, the record type is different. And this particular record type, if you if you are seeing for the advanced user, this is similar. But if you come to executive, it is completely uh, different. So these are the check marks. So if a particular person, if an executive has access to this particular administrator, then there will be a, a job triggered, and it will um, or it will be an alert generated in the system that this particular person has this access, and how he got access, how this that will come under the auditing um, by the IT team itself, and they will trigger email, and uh, they will ask for the justification and if it's valid justification, how, when, and why is this access has been given, if there is any data which has been um, uh, moved from uh, the system. So there is a, uh, uh, there was a question about uh, the identity access management and all this. There is a Splunk, which is, I will explain about Splunk as well. So, uh, uh, if you have some time, then there is a, you can uh, you can learn Splunk. It will definitely help to uh, monitor if, even a single file or single thing is if, say, if there is change in the system. For example, if the email is deleted, if a file is deleted, or if, if a file is copied from one one place to another, whether it is uh, any source, whether it is remote desktop or anything, the Splunk tool it will monitor and it will record all the things which has happened. At the limited time, and it will uh, it will give the results and all. So the same thing is done by used by the auditor teams uh, so as to monitor. So here, uh, coming to uh, the profiles, we have, we have here as this uh, default profiles, which is uh, system generated by our organization. Now, access. Uh, what are the access? It, it it can be defined this way. So whether it is a edit. Now, administrator should have full, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm giving him as a full access. Advanced user also need a full access. Uh, I will give administrator default access. This is, I will give it to administrator default access. Uh, default access is there. And let me give this one. And I will give this owner access to advanced user. Executive will have limited access as this one, this is already defined. So now coming to this, whatever the rules, uh, rules are defined with this one, the policies which you are marrying, whenever there is a scheduler which is run, they will have all set up, or else a particular person joining an organization, uh, for example, a, they have to, I'm talking about uh, almost 10, 15 years, they need to, submit a request to the service desk or send an email to the team so as to provide a number of access, uh, sending an email, and there was uh, approval level there, and it used to get stuck in the approval system. Obviously. A person joining an organization has to wait for at least a couple of weeks to get the complete access before it's he or she is to start their work. So uh, that was a cubers, like, uh, and we cannot assume who is joining the organization and what rules are needed. So these kind of uh, challenges were there in the beginning of IT. So when we have this identity access management system, it, it has helped the organization. A person joining a particular team will have, uh, so the uh, roles are defined. Uh, the, the scheduler is also mentioned like it, it should run this particular jobs 
every 24 hours. So a particular record is there, it will pull it, uh, pull the records, it will generate the username, pass it to the manager. Once the details are sent to the manager, all these things, and uh, the title is updated and everything, then for a particular person who is from this particular sales rep team, so sales rep team will have this, uh, whatever the uh, I'm doing here, access here, and uh, this is the one. Whatever the records are defined for this one, he will, he or she will get all the records, and he or she will be able to access the uh, access the uh, applications within the organization which are for their team. Now privileges uh, is this clear, or I will I will go in depth in uh, in depth about how these uh, uh, policies are made and how the policies are implemented in the organization. I will explain in depth. This is just for explanation because, uh, as I know that there are a couple of people who are uh, who are just beginners for the identity access management. So this is basic, and I will explain in detail when we have another session. Now privileges. Coming to the privileges, uh, what I will do is here. Uh, so we have uh, these are the privileges which are given. So here we have. Uh, role name, what are the role names and all these things which we are discussing it here. This is the policy which is de de defined at the, uh, well, uh, at the organization level and this, uh, this involves uh, higher management and the access. So if you put this check mark and all these things, this will, uh, this will have the jobs uh, uh, like a, for a particular, uh, uh, particular category. This privilege is defined and the access, what kind of access is needed. For example, if it is a read access, this edit, read only, full and all this, it can be uh, defined at the time. So here, uh, we will explain uh, all these things in detail. So, uh, so far, what we have here is a identity access and basics is a identity which is uh, uh, generated by, uh, by a, uh, the details are entered by the HR and the platform, uh, platform system that will be pulled by IT team and they, it will be generated, uh, the, if they will generate this, uh, whether it is manual or it is uh, automated, they will generate the records. Now the identity access management team will have the policy design, they will have rules, uh, they will have, they will be responsible for the accounts, privileges, password, management, everything. And <laughs> once all these records are there in the system and all these things, the, the schedule will be run, run the, uh, every 24 hours and they will have the access. So if there is any uh, changes in the system or they need to uh, modify anything, then the role of entity access management of the, uh, the person will be there to make the changes and all these things. That is also administrator. And uh, uh, this uh, this is a uh, uh, must uh, role uh, uh, for any uh, um, any organization. So learning the I am there are many things which I will explain. What are the certification or courses that is needed? Um, and in my next sessions, or if you want to know, I, I can explain as well. So uh, almost it's a uh, five past uh, two. So anybody have any question which I can answer now? This will be uh, free to uh, uh, answer questions. Definitely, I will answer it. Uh, uh, Shweb. Uh... Yes, yes. Uh, please ask the question. You can ask anything on cyber security. Any generic question also, if you have. You can unmute and talk. I'll stop the recording. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you can stop the recording. Hmm.